This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's one that you've been asking for. This is the Microsoft Lumia 950 XL. XL for extra large, 5.7 inch AMOLED display here, QHD resolution. We've already reviewed the Lumia 950, which is the 5.2 inch model. That's $100 less expensive. That one was on AT&T. This one is an unlocked phone, dual SIM phone. We'll talk about what that means. And you can use it on any GSM carrier, 4G LTE. Other goodies include the top of the line Snapdragon 810 CPU, the new Windows 10 for phones, or Windows 10 Mobile, whatever you want to call it, these names, huh? Continuum is here, Cortana for your voice recognition pleasure and commands and all that sort of thing. It's not a cheap phone though. It's it's $650 unlocked. Granted, no contract, no payments, no nothing like that, but still that's a lot of money. And is it worth it? We're going to find out now. So this is the Microsoft Lumia 950 XL. No longer Nokia in the name, just Microsoft. And it's the bigger version in some ways, and this, in theory, somewhat faster version of the 950 that we already reviewed here, which has a 5.2 inch display, slightly slower CPUs, same camera, a lot of the same features, all that sort of thing. Uh, both of these are available in your choice of black or white with removable polycarbonate backs. Now there are third party backs, even Microsoft stores are starting to stock some of those. Uh, so if you want some jazzy colors and that sort of thing, and there's a really nice optional leather back third party that you can search for. If you're looking for the, for backs, make sure you get ones that are compatible with the, the NFC and the Qi wireless charging. That's the tricky part, because we do have both NFC and Qi wireless charging. And it works pretty well with this. We tested two different Qi wireless chargers and that worked just fine. 20 megapixel pure view camera on the back. We still have that Nokia lingo for that sort of stuff there. Triple tone LED flash for natural colors. You can see it right there. Hey, you're looking at the same camera, just a different physical presentation really as on the 950. Five megapixel front camera. This back is removable. Hey, that's a nice thing and becoming rarer and rarer. And it, in the box, there's even a little sticker with an arrow to point you towards a very subtle little pry point where you would actually pry off the back, which you do like so. For $650, you know, I said the same thing even about the fifth $100 cheaper, that's $550, regular $950. It doesn't look as classy as it might. I like polycarbonate look. I think that some of the previous Lumias have looked pretty cool. This one just looks eh, but some alternative backs can really, you know, jazz it up nicely. It takes a little working off of the fingernails here to get this off. And that's what it looks like on the inside here. And here we have a removable 3340 milliamp battery. That's a nice big battery. Micro SD card slot compatible with cards up to 200 gigs. We do have a card installed there. Easy peasy to use one of those now. No special formatting or anything required like Windows of old, Windows Phone. SIM card slot number one over here. We have an AT&T SIM in this. A T-Mobile SIM would work. A variety of SIMs. We have a lot of LTE 4G band supported. And that's your second nano SIM card slot. It's a dual SIM phone. That's a feature that's more popular in some overseas countries than it is in the United States. Uh, where most of us do just keep one SIM and a phone, but sometimes people want to have two lines and two phone numbers. You can even have mixed carriers if you want to, and you can do it with that. And we'll show you how that's handled in software too. We got our speaker over here. And that is the back of the phone naked. On the bottom here, we have a USB-C port. We haven't seen that in too many phones. The, uh, the latest Nexus phones or some of the few others that we've seen it on. You get a quick charging USB-C charger in the box and also a, a, a USB-C to standard USB-A. That's the usual USB connector you have on most computers. So you can actually transfer data if you wish. It's nice that that's in the box. On the side of the phone, we have the dedicated camera key. I always like that. This is a... <laughs> Who designed this? I, right here. We have the volume up, we have the volume down, we have the power button in the middle. So that means you're probably accidentally, unless you really get the hang of feeling it, going to be hitting the power button sometimes when you're shooting for the volume keys or alternatively doing something you didn't want to do. These buttons are kind of sharp too and a little bit rough. And not not really thrilled with that. It's good that they're tactile and you can feel them, you know, sometimes they're very soft and smooth and they blend into the body, but this could just about pull the calluses off my fingertips since I play guitar. I have some of those. It's a good little nail file maybe, I don't know. Is not the, not the nicest touch. Clean looking lines over here and we got our headphone jacks centered right up top and center. In this lighting, it's really hard to see the glance screen, but you can have your own picture very faintly. You might be able to see my kitty, you might not. On Under bright light, you can't see. Under normal 
home or office lighting again shows you the time and notifications so you're aware of them this does support windows hello and it uses there's two types of windows hello the cameras that microsoft is using like on the surface products it's doing facial recognition here it's doing iris recognition and you can set it up first you have to choose a pin as a backup and then it tells you to take off your glasses if you wear glasses which can be a bad joke if you're terribly nearsighted you might actually have trouble seeing the written instructions on the screen uh, that said, you, setting it up is pretty easy, but it's kind of hit or miss. You, you have to hold the phone really close to your face, which can be kind of awkward. Sometimes you just, you know, you start waving it around like the magic wand, and then you say, I give up, and you put in your pin. I trust over time that that will improve. It works really great on the Surface Book and Surface Pro 4, so they'll probably get it right here, and then it's going to be a magical little feature. But right now, yeah, hit or miss. The other captivating feature that Microsoft might have hoped that would uh, this could steal you know, folks away from their Android and their, their iPhone handsets is Continuum right here. Now we've con covered Continuum before on the 950, so I'm not going to go over it again. You can watch that review, but it's pretty neat. You can either use the $99 display dock, which Microsoft is giving away via mail-in rebate with these for a li limited time. It's They're still doing it right now, but it takes eight to ten weeks to get it, so if you're impatient, that's not so much fun. Anyway, hook it up to that. You can plug a keyboard and a mouse into that in your display, and you can actually use this with a full-size monitor. Now, only apps that support Continuum will run, which means basically right now the built-in apps, not many of the third-party apps, if any at all, as a matter of fact. Maybe they're hoping in that 8 to 10 weeks' time that they'll actually get more apps on board. But you can actually use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the Edge web browser that's built in, and it's a very sort of desktop -y like experience. There's a lot of shared DNA between this and Windows 10 for laptops and desktops. And that's not a bad thing. And there's going to be universal apps eventually, so developers can have an easy time of doing live tile apps either for the phone or for your laptop or your desktop. But uh, the UI has gotten a little bit more complex over time. And some of it is a lot more like Windows 10 for your desktop, and I'm not sure that's a good thing. The, the, the settings have gotten more granular, but they've also gotten a lot more complicated. Every category has several categories underneath it. You start hunting for settings. When things go wrong, you get those evil Microsoft error codes, you know, 0x8551234. In case you need help, type in this <laughs> digit right into Google or Bing and see what it might mean. That That's not something we want to see on phones. We want something that actually is human speak, right? So... Overall, I like the synergy, and there is an element of familiarity if you're using Windows 10 on the desktop and you're using this, but they might have taken it a little too far at this point. The phone is running on the 2 GHz Snapdragon 810. That's currently the fastest CPU available in the Snapdragon family with Adreno 430 graphics, 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, plus you get that micro SD card slot. So this guy should be nice and fast, shouldn't it? That's how you get to your all apps, in case you don't know. It doesn't really feel much faster than the regular 950 with the slower CPU, that's it. And I think that's because uh, Windows 10 for phones still is a work in progress, and it, it needs some fine-tuning. There are times when this will actually balk and stutter a little bit, which is something we didn't, never saw in Windows Phone 8 and 8.1. So obviously, it's Microsoft trying to get things right, because this is very fast hardware inside of here. It does get toasty if you're doing something like gaming, especially if you're charging at the same time. All phones generally will get toasty then. And this is the warm spot right here. Not burning hot, though. So nothing that has concerned me in terms of thermals on it. The web browser, like I said, is Microsoft Edge, for better or worse. It's been a problem child a little bit on desktops. It can be very good and render very pretty, but, you know, it's sometimes you'll notice things like if you've got multiple tabs loading that it reloads every time you switch between tabs that sort of thing again this feels like another work in progress however it does do a pretty good job of rendering desktop sites and of course it works with mobile sites too so overall it's not bad uh, again I feel like Microsoft has some work to do there. The Office applications, these are mobile versions. Of course, your desktop has a whole lot more horsepower and storage capabilities for large applications, so this is never going to do everything your desktop does. But these are pretty capable little applications. And for those of you who aren't married to Google Docs and all that sort of thing, there's your little introduction. It, it, it's quite nice, and if you have an Office 365 subscription, you can use OneDrive and go to town with it. And this is what Word looks like in an actual document. And the hamburger menu is now pervasively <laughs> everywhere. Funny little UI 
glitches. See what I mean? How those the menus didn't actually load instantly. This is a dual SIM phone, so you're not seeing things twice for no reason at all. It actually has separate little phone apps for each SIM card. I think that's a pretty nice way of handling because otherwise, uh, having reviewed some dual SIM Android phones, sometimes it's a little confusing as to who's who in the zoo and, and which SIM card you're actually using. So for those of you who use that feature, it's not so bad. The status up here actually tells you you, know, you have a no SIM 2 sign there if you don't have a SIM installed and it, it's not so bad. Dual band Wi-Fi, it also have an AC with Bluetooth 4.1 and usual GPS and NFC. Uh, some people I know have had trouble with Wi-Fi with this. We use this mostly on the 5 gigahertz band, and it's actually behaved fine for us. The only place we've had problems with networking, and it really has nothing to do with Wi-Fi, is the store application. So store is a nice looking place, and you, Microsoft surprisingly put a lot of preloaded apps on this, you know, because it's not a carrier phone, it doesn't get bloatware, but they put Uber on this and Amazon and a bunch of different popular apps, so you know they actually do exist for Windows Phone too. The app ecosystem is nothing like the huge thing that is the Android App Store or, or Apple's for that matter, but you know, all this, the core apps are just about there. Anyway, when you get one of these phones, chances are a lot of the apps need to be updated. It's going to tell you right there with an arrow. It took two days of getting it to try. It seemed like the phone, every time it would just sleep the screen, it would stop downloading. It would just balk. It was kind of just driving me crazy. Now, our little 950 behaved better than that. It still has that problem occasionally. And, you know, that's not an unusual thing with Windows Phone. It's a little bulky with the store updates and with downloading and all that kind of thing. But this says that sometimes carrier intervention is not a bad thing because this is the AT&T model. There's the logo right there. So AT&T and all carriers put their phones through a whole battery of tests for reliability and usability before they'll put them out on the shelf. So in this case, they might have kept Microsoft in line a little bit for a little bit more stable experience on that front. That said, we do have the latest release software on this. There was a big update. It did improve some stuff. We are not running the Insider Preview because we want a stable experience, an out-of-the-box experience like you would have here. An Insider Preview can add some neat new features, but it can also introduce some stability problems right there. Call quality on the phone is good, but surprisingly not quite as good as the 950. Once again, it, it, I wouldn't say that calls sound underwater outgoing, but they sound a little bit digitized, even if you're not calling from a noisy environment. But overall, it's pretty decent. Incoming voice sounds loud and clear. Very nice on this good earpiece. Good audio, in fact, through the headphone jack. Plenty of volume out of this. And the speakers are not bad either. Some people have had problems with crackling and popping sounds from the speakers when playing music or switching audio tracks. I haven't had that problem with this. In terms of data speeds, using the speedtest.net app on AT&T and T-Mobile, data speeds were quite good and par for the course with comparable speeds to any carrier phone. This supports LTE bands 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 12, 17, 20, and 28. So you should get good coverage wherever you go with either carrier. And of course, it'll work overseas as well. For those of you who want to travel internationally and being unlocked, you can put in any GSM carrier SIM that you want. Front of this phone is protected with Gorilla Glass 4. And again, this is a QHD AMOLED display, 2560 by 1440 resolution. It being AMOLED, it has vivid colors, but they're pretty well controlled. And there's a couple of different color profiles you can choose from. It has outdoor display mode, but that said, the brightness is not super bright. We are running it actually at max brightness right now, which is around 300 nits. And Glare is a little bit of an issue, but it's a very pretty, nicely color-balanced display that I rather like for looking at photos and watching video. It's big at 5.7 inches, too, so it's real pleasing for those of you who want to use this for content consumption. So this is a front 5-megapixel camera, wide-angle lens, f2.4. It can shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second. It's a pretty good front camera. The rear 20-megapixel camera, again, it's akin to what's in the 950, and it's a good camera. I wouldn't say it beats the pants off of, say, the Samsung Galaxy S6, the LG V10, or even the iPhone 6S Plus, which, like this, also has optical image stabilization, but it certainly is good and takes very pleasing and natural photos. And this is what the picture interface looks like. You can either use your dedicated hardware button to take a picture, or you can use the on-screen buttons. We've got quick access to the flash control, swapping between cameras, effects. You can use Lumia lenses with this, anything from bar card readers to special effects. And if you want to get to more settings over here, 
or the photo timer is right there. Uh, focus speeds are not bad. Sometimes I do see it hunting back and forth a little bit, but it, it shot times are very quick on this. So we have the Surface Book back here. And because one of the nice things, if you use the same Microsoft account, the pictures sync so seamlessly. Instead of showing you on the teeny screen some of the pictures we've taken, we're going to show you on the big screen. And by the way, this can shoot 4K video at 30 frames per second. It's pretty good video, particularly when lighting is better. The 1080p video, of course, is a little bit softer because 1080p is lower resolution, but it's pretty, pretty good camera overall. I wouldn't say, again, that it, it, it beats the competition, but it certainly keeps up with the best that's available right now on other platforms. So let's take a look at the photos on our Surface Book. So there, a little bit of a blue color cast, uh, outdoors, mm, blue to magenta, but otherwise it's pretty sharp and it handles the high contrast well. The silver of the car often would be a problem. Here, again, this is another high contrast setting, testing to see how it would handle the colors. It did a beautiful job. The blue over here, the, the color of the building, that is actually correct color. Exposure in darker areas over here, nicely handled. So. It's a good camera. I don't think anybody would complain about this. Here, just for checking out our details right there, really nice and sharp. Beautiful flowers, sharply rendered as we zoom in. You can see they stay sharp. They stay very colorful and crisp. Contrast is lovely on this. And another flower shot. Here, still very distinct. Colors are not dithering together, anything like that. Look at the detail over here. It, it's, it's good. All right, so those were mostly bright lit shots. This is actually shot indoors here. Not the best lighting, but still, let's take a look at something darker. You know, here, these, well, dark wine bottles didn't expose quite right. This is a little bit overexposed. It's not a bad photo, but then give it another try. And here, this is absolutely perfect. Really nice blacks on this. Good sharp contrast. The lights are light. Everything is very clear. You can actually see the texture on the labels of the bottle. So overall, I, you can tell I like the camera quite a lot. And I would expect that for a high-end Lumia. They're supposed to have good cameras. And in fact, this one does. It's a nice big screen for playing games. It's a nice fast processor with good graphics too. So everything we would expect. So we'll have a little Asphalt 8 going on here that, as you can see, plays quite smoothly. The speaker is at 50% volume. It's a pretty loud speaker. Game control is good on this. I am playing sideways right now, so don't go by the way that I'm driving on this. It, it's just fine. One thing, this game will eat up your battery a lot. <laughs> Boy, achievement unlocked. Uh, games will eat the battery up pretty quickly on this. And in fact, despite the large 33, 40 milliamp battery in here, I, and generally what's a power frugal uh, AMOLED display, the battery life on this is just okay. Uh, Sometimes I struggle to make it to the end of the day. That means bedtime before charging. And that's just with moderate use, streaming some videos, doing social networking, browsing the web, all that sort of thing. Throw in some games and you're for sure going to have to charge this fella probably sometime in midday. It's one of the nice little things I like about Windows Phone. You can just swipe in at any time like that whenever you need the menus to control something. And we have all the nice notifications up here. Very good notification system. You can get information about stock market, all sorts of things, breaking news. And of course, Cortana is on board too for your voice command. And voice dictation in general works very well on Windows Phone. So there's some upsides there too. So that's the Microsoft Lumia 950 XL. It's available now and firmware updates and software updates, OS updates have helped it some. There's a firmware update we're still waiting to receive. It was just released today. That's supposed to make some improvements. Still, it's kind of a quacky little phone. The 950 was more stable for us. Like I said, sometimes carrier influence can be a good thing because they put it through a whole lot of testing. With this one, Microsoft can ride free and loose, put out OS updates whenever they want, do whatever they want with it. Uh, but the trade-off can be with such a new operating system some stability, some quirks, some annoyances. There are some of those here. Still, it, we haven't seen a flagship Windows 10 phone yet until now. We haven't seen a flagship Windows phone for quite some time. So if you want a big screen version, this one is it right now. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.